Wow, does that look good. Yo, what's up guys? My name is JT and we're gonna continue to work on this cement plant right here on Model Railroad in the Southwest. So what I'm gonna show you guys how to do is install some lights for the truck stop parking lot and also some lights for the cement plant. What I'm gonna use is some Atlas lights and those you need to weld in some, not weld, you need to solder in some re resistors and then connect them to a bus wire. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. The next thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to connect the wires from the structure, the cement structure to the Woodland Scenics system. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do all that. So let's get started. So the plan is, is to install some lights along this little retaining wall behind the truck stop. They're gonna go along this area right here. I'm gonna install four of the lights there. I think I'm gonna put one here, there, and then two of them behind the uh, Bigfoot truck and all that down there. I'm going to install some other lights that are going to be for the cement plant and those are going to be along this area where the cement trucks are, one over there to light up the hopper for the front end loader and then one back there near the uh, the area where the, all the gravel is. So let's go over to the workbench and let's get started. So check it out. This is what I'm going to use to light up the parking lot. These are very nice Atlas lights. They look really good. As you see them on the layout, they look great and they're really bright. There's only one problem. I don't know what color they are. I know they're uh, marked as warm LED. I just don't know if that's the correct thing because I ordered some last year and they were actually cool white. I have several packages of these, so I don't know which ones are warm white and I don't know which ones are cool white. So I guess we'll find out. I'll come up and hopefully they're all the right colors. So next, I what I want to show you guys are these, um, or is this a uh, soldering iron. Get yourself a nice soldering iron. This one's from Radio Shack. Obviously, they're not in business anymore, but go on Amazon, you'll find one. Next off is this hookup wire. You can get that at Hobby Lobby. I would rather use single-stranded wire, although this is what I have on hand, and it was cheap. So the next thing I want to show you guys is this heat shrink tubing. It's already cut to really good lengths. I got that at Harbor Freight. Next are some wire strippers and wire cutters. Get yourself a nice little pair of those. Don't go cheap because they don't work good. These are Cornwell. These are were kind of expensive, but um, you know, stick to a good brand. Go to Craftsman or you know something like that. Don't go to Walmart and buy like the cheapest stuff you can find. So let's get started. Okay, so let's open up this package. So like I was telling you earlier, these are nice lights. They are made out of metal, and you know they're just very durable. So let's go ahead and open these up. So this is actually very interesting. I was about to tell you guys that there's no instructions on how to set up these lights. These actually came wired. Um, I actually had to find out if I was wiring them correctly. I looked at the Atlas site and it was really vague and there really wasn't much about these. So these are actually already pre-wired, which is really nice. So there's really not much of a video for me to make now, but you know what? I think I have some old ones where I can show you guys how to hook these up just in case that you get a package where they're already not hooked up. So let me find another package and let's see how it goes. Okay, so I dug around in the box and I found this open container. It's missing one and I know this one is white. Um, like I said, it says warm LED, that's incorrect. So let's go ahead and open up this box. As you can see, there are no instructions whatsoever. And you know, for somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, you know, when it comes to LEDs, it's a little difficult because, you know, how do you know where to put the resistor on and stuff? You know, luckily I kind of had an idea, but I still researched just in case because I didn't want to screw up these lights because they were kind of expensive. So I'm going to show you guys how to hook these up. So like I said in the package, the, LED, the resistors are separate from the wires. So I'm going to take these out and we're going to solder these up and I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so let's check it out. Here we have the light. There are the two strands of wires and then here's the resistor. I have these two nice pliers. You can get these at Hobby Lobby. You don't have to use these. I use them so that I can hold the wire up here and then use uh, the soldering iron you know, in conjunction so I don't have to be holding a bunch of stuff at the same time and then, you know, burn myself or burn my mat or something. So you can get these. These are nice. They're not too pricey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this wire about right here and then I'm going to wire this in line 
with the red wire. So I'm going to cut it here and then attach the rest of the wire right here. I'll put that off to the side so I don't lose that. These are uh, kind of a little overkill for this, but I'm going to cut it about maybe about an inch down or so. Or yeah, let's give it about a couple inches. I'm going to cut it there. And then we're going to strip this. Now, typically I'll use a I'll use a uh, lighter to strip it, but let's see if these are small enough to strip this wire. Wow, would you look at that? It worked really well. So we're going to strip that there. And also I'm going to strip this wire. Oh, that actually cut it. So that's uh, really not a good use of these strippers. So like I said before, you can use a lighter to strip this wire. But if you do it carefully, you can use those strippers. So like I said before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this wire to the resistor. So if you can see, I'm just going to wrap it around just like that. Then I'm going to put them both together on the pliers. So there's a couple of things I forgot to show you guys in the supply list. The first one is this heat gun. Get yourself one of these heat guns. You can find this at Harbor Freight. I got this for like 10 bucks with the coupon. They're nice to have. You can do a lot of things with them. And they're also nice to have for the heat shrink tubing. You don't really need this for the heat shrink tubing. You can use a lighter or something different to melt the tubing. Although there is a possibility you can melt the insulation on the wire and then it's going to turn into a mess. So get yourself one of these. They're nice. Also, the next thing I forgot to show you was actual solder. I use Rosencore solder. You just make sure you get yourself some electrical solder. Okay, so let's get ready to solder. Soldering is very easy. If you're afraid to solder, don't be afraid. It's really, really easy. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So what I usually do is I'll get the soldering iron and I'll just put it underneath what you're going to solder. I'm just going to hold it down so that you can warm up the metal that you're going to solder or the wire and just run it across a little bit then tin the tip of the solder just like that get a little bit of the solder underneath and then you just put it along the bottom as easy as that there, you've soldered a wire. Very easy, right? That looks pretty good to me, and I don't think that's going anywhere. I'm going to tug on it, and it's not going anywhere. So the next thing that I want to do is get the heat shrink tubing. And the one that I'm using is a 330 seconds diameter heat shrink tubing. And I'm just going to slide it over the resistor and right over the wire. Now I want to be able to put another piece of heat shrink tubing on this side, so I'm only going to put it over half of the resistor. Now that you have it there, you get your heat shrink or your uh, heat gun, and then you just turn it on and and there you go. It's all done. So let's go ahead and put on the other side. We'll put this wire on. So now I'm going to solder on this side. So I'm just going to put it here and just wrap it around the resistor. And then we're going to solder that. So like I said before, try to get it hot. You want the wire and the resistor super hot so that the, res so the solder just wicks in. So get it a little hot there. I didn't tend it this time. I'm just going to put it down here and just run it across. There we go. Now it's all done and soldered up. So what I'm going to do next is put another 330 seconds piece of heat shrink over it just like that 
and then we're gonna heat shrink that now that's done with the wire that we soldered the next piece that I'm gonna get is 530 seconds so this one's bigger now the reason I'm gonna use this is so that I can keep these the white and the red wired together so I'm gonna keep it there then I'm gonna get the heat gun just hit it there it's all set now all these wires are hooked up and it's ready to go so this technique you can use it for any LED lights that you buy um, it doesn't it's not solely just for these Atlas lights if you buy some other Walther's lights or any other brand this is the same technique you know put heat shrink wire in the resistor and then wire in the wire it's really easy so let's get head over to the layout and install these Okay, so this is what I'm going to use for the Woodland Cynic side of things. I'm going to use the expansion hub, the lights and hub set, and the tidy wire kit. You don't really need the tidy wire kit. I just got it just because I wanted to see if it worked well or not. The next thing is that terminal block. That is the black thing with all the screws on it, and that is going to be used to connect the wires for the parking lot lights. The next thing I'm going to use are those two drill bits. One's a 1 8 the smaller one. The next one is a 3 8 the bigger one. The 1 8 is for the holes coming from the top of the layout down, and the next one is a 3 8 that is to send the wires through the bottom of the layout. And then a drill. You can use whatever drill you want. This one is mine. This is my favorite one. As you can tell, it's pretty beat up. So let's head over to the layout. Okay, so we're going to drill the holes to send the wires down through the layout. This is probably the easiest part of this whole thing. So what you're going to do is you're just going to get the drill bit and find where you want to put it. So I'm going to count from one, two, three, four, the fourth pilaster, and I'm going to drill down into the layout. And I'm just going to go in the middle section of where the, of the, between the wall and the curb. So I'm just going to drill down. Just like that. See how easy that was? So in order to feed the wires down through, I have a very sturdy piece of baling wire. And I put a small hook at the end so that I can hook the wire through. And then the other side is as straight as I can. Get it. So then I'll wrap the wire around the hook and I'll send it through. Once it's through the bottom, I just grab it from underneath and then just pull it down through. Just like that. That's pretty much it. That's how you feed in the wires. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys what it looks like down here. It looks like a mess right now because I cut some of the zip ties so I can let them loose a little bit. But there is the light hub for the Woodland Scenics lights and then there is the terminal. I had already installed this like last year around this time. And then there is a Bachman um, power pack, and that's what's running the street lights and the parking lot lights and all that. And then down here is a surge protector, and down back there is a switch for the Woodland Scenics. So what I'm going to do is install the expansion hub next to this so that I can wire this up and then send a cable through that hole or one of these holes and then down through here, through that hole, out the back over here, and then through there, and then we'll hook up one of the new light hubs there. So that's what it all looks like right now. There are the wires that are sticking out from the parking lot lights. And we're gonna wire those up. So here's the terminal block. I use this to control the street lights and the parking lot lights. I know this looks really complicated. It is not. It's just the way it looks when it's wired. I bought one that you need to use jumpers. 
there's some that you can buy that don't require jumpers. I just bought this one just because it was cheaper and I figured I knew how to do it. So you can use the positive and negative wire that comes from the Bachman power pack or whatever power pack you want to do as long as it's DC. So what you do is you get the positive wire and you connect it here and then you get the negative and connect it here. Then you just jump it from here over this way and then you jump it from there this way. Then you can use the bottom ones to connect your lights and whatever you want to connect. And I may have wired it a little more difficult than what it should have been, but this is what I came up with and this is how I saw on videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a black and a red wire from the hookup wire and I'm going to crimp some uh, connectors and I'm going to connect it from the negative and then I'm going to connect the positive and we're going to run the wires underneath the layout and we're going to connect the lights. I mentioned that I was using connectors to connect the wire to the terminal blocks. These are what I'm using. These are spade connectors and these are from Atlas. So there's the item number and there's spade connectors number three. So these are really nice. They work really well. So I'm going to show you guys how I connect the parking lot lights underneath the layout. So what I do is I get the wire and I use these. This is why I recommend to buy these. I just strip them to reveal a small area of bare wire just like that then next what I do is I'll slip a piece of I'll slip a piece of the heat shrink tubing over the exposed wire and I'll wrap this one over this one just like that Then I will bend it just a bit and slide this down. And then I solder it. Then I expose the wire just a little bit more so that I don't melt any wires. And then I reach in here with the soldering iron very carefully, not to burn anything and melt. I heat up the wire some and then I add some solder. As you can see, it's a nice little solder then I slip this right over the newly soldered joint and then I use the heat gun and I heat shrink it it's pretty easy but it's kind of a pain in the butt just because it's underneath the layout and your neck's going to get tired and your arms are going to get tired. Like I said, it looks messy down here. I cut some zip ties. So over here is the light hub. I disconnected the in, which is a wall wart that connects into the surge protector. And this is the control, which is the switch. So I just went ahead and plugged them into the expansion hub. As you see there, there is the in, which is the power. And those go in very easily and there is the control which is the switch so i'm going to go ahead and mount this right now so i can connect them together so because i added a switch to the expansion hub i had to remove the control wire which is this little loop of wire with the connector on the end so i removed it from the control socket and i'm going to move it over to the light hub control socket so i'm going to put that in there to make sure that there's a complete connection and all the lights will work. So from the expansion hub, what I did was is I soldered another few feet of wire to the connector because it was too short. So as you can see, it's right there. It's connected to the red and black wire. And it's sent over through this hole, through this side, over here, and it goes through there and over here to the other light hub right there so those two wires coming down from that hole are from the concrete plant and i soldered in a couple more wires to extend them sent them to the hole and then i sent them over to the light hub as you can see there and then i soldered on the connectors just right there and plugged them right in so it came out pretty good so here we are sitting in the dark and I'm about to turn these on for the first time.
Wow, does that look good or does that look good? I am so excited with the outcome. This thing just looks absolutely incredible. You know, it would have been pretty embarrassing if these lights didn't turn on, but they did. Luckily, I'm not Clark Griswold and I actually did these right. So I'm really excited the way these lights came out. I'm not going to lie, this took a long time to do. It took about six hours to get all this all together. And I'm lucky enough that I did this the first time, so I kind of had a, an idea on how to wire these lights. And it went a lot smoother than the first time, I'll tell you that. So it was really tedious, but I'll tell you guys, if you really want lights on your layout, just do it because you will not regret it. And, um, you know, going through the pain and suffering of your neck and, you know, and burning yourself and all that stuff, you know, it's actually pretty worth it. But so let's take this phone off the tripod and let's take a better look. This whole scene just looks completely different. I mean, obviously, because there's lights on and it's not dark, but man, it just really changed this whole area. Like with the lights over the Bigfoot and the light in the corner over there, and the light lighting up the front end loader near the hopper. And then there's the light down there inside the building. And then there's the light inside the office. And the lighting up of the driveway just looks incredibly good. Nighttime operations are just going to be completely just different. So take a look at this side. Here's the rest of the layout lit. This all just looks really incredible. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up and we'll see you with the lights on. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This was an incredible project. It was a great time doing it. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun showing you guys how to do it as well. One of my favorite things to do is lights, although the wiring can just be such a pain in the butt. But it's done. It looks great. I'm very, very happy with it. If you guys want to put lights on your layout, do it. You'll love it. Um, if you guys have any questions, please put in a comment down below. If it's a very long question, send me an email. I told you guys I was going to do some details on this video, although I'm going to leave that for the next video because I don't have any of the stuff prepared and I think this video is going to be pretty long judging by how much I had to film. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So talk to you later. Take care and keep it tuned the rails.